so pretty. So much snow. Traffic is going slow. Everybody's being very respectful, which is very nice. Don't know what I'm doing. I was supposed to get on the highway way back there, but the ramp was closed because of an accident. Like a little car went flying off the highway. Looked fine, just in a big ditch full of snow. I'm running out to do a couple of errands. I don't know if there's any point in vlog. The last few times I've been out, the music's been really loud in the stores. And with the N95 mess, you can't, maybe I didn't even need to be doing any of this. Probably shouldn't have started with this. Well, it's, a, it's pretty. Let's get to see how pretty things are. Now, back to moving. So, time to put the camera down. Uh, look at all of these cute little Loratas. Fiddle leaf bush. Not usually that impressed with these, but for some reason, I think they're adorable. Hey, uh, that's a good price. You see what I'm talking about with the music? It is insanely loud. Oh, there's no glass in there. Look how big it is though. This thing's huge. This will be cute to like stick a fern inside of there. Something like that. Oh, bulbs. Oh yeah. I already have all these. Dahlias, gladiolas, caladiums. Fun boxed ones. Good selection. The snow piles are so big, it's like going through a maze trying to figure out how to get around out here. So much fun, and those are the little piles. There are some huge piles back there by Walmart. This was all pretty pointless and unnecessary, but at least I got to see some snow. Very pretty snow. Melting off nice in the neighborhood. I also got some absolutely beautiful, stunning roses while I was there. The flowers have been slim picking since the start of the pandemic, but they did have some that looked pretty nice. They I think they said cayenne. The color is a bit intense. But they remind me of some roses that I really like. They're called cherry brandy wine, which I don't see very often, but they're absolutely stunning. I'll show them to you when we get back to the house. Probably shouldn't have gotten them because it's like <laughs> 18 degrees outside, so I had to book it out to the car. So they should be all right. Okay, all right. Excuse me. The snow is very deep. Oh, that's that's great. No, I do not have boots. It doesn't snow here that often. I mean, it does, but not like this. You know, actually, I think that's a lie. I'm pretty sure I do have a pair of boots, but I don't know where they are. Never wear them. You see the... <laughs> There's a spot in the ceiling of the garage where apparently some heat's escaping. <laughs> that's good to know. There's a spot that I need to put some insulation over. Hey, baby. Are you sleeping? You have a good nap, Turbo? Sorry for waking you up. You said you're a good boy. I thought you were Toby. Where's Toby? You're in Toby's spot. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. This is the side of the tank. There, they have lots of room. Hope you're doing well. I'm great. I don't know if I already said that. I'm distracted. I'm trying to find Toby. Where'd Toby go? Senor Toby, there he is. Hey, baby Toby. How you doing, baby? Such a good boy. Good boy, Toby. Go outdoors. It's a beautiful day. Wanna go out? You need to... You don't, he doesn't want to. That looks like something that it's not. That's a de-stuffed dog toy. Yes, I know you want to go outdoors. You always want to go outdoors. You want to go outside? Okay, this is because, well, Turbo stuck his head through the screen. That's the bottom of the screen that was over there. Always an adventure with the dogs. Snow's starting to melt, took a while. <laughs> I think up to 63 today. 63 and there's still an awful lot of snow on the ground. It was just beautiful. What a beautiful week. Did y'all enjoy your snow? Comment down below. Did you have a good time? I know it was a bit much in some places. All right, Colby, I'll leave you alone. You keep sleeping. Go ahead and get these windmill palms moved back out. They've been taking up a lot of room in here for a few weeks, like three weeks. Pablo Escobar. Forgot he was in there. He was hidden. I just now noticed that. I need to take him downstairs and put him away. I think there's still too much snow to move those outside. Because that they need to go right there. That's the... I could go get a shovel, but I don't want to. They're in the garage tucked way behind all the plants. Yeah, see, there's still, still a lot of snow on the ground considering it was in the 60s today. But it was beautiful. Hi, Toby. He's such a good boy, Toby. That was fast, Turbo. Come on in, baby. Good boy. You know the rules. Do your stretches. Do your stretches, Turbo. Good boy. Nice stretches. Here you go, Toby. Picked up some roses. Aren't these just beautiful? They're called cayenne. They remind me a lot of the cherry brandy wine roses, which are my favorite, but they're not as coral. They're more of a hot pink. I did go through and pull the bed petals. There's still some left in there. I think I have a plant in the mail. I got a notification saying it had been delivered. I don't see it out there, so I'm gonna go check the mailbox, see what that looks like, and then maybe, hopefully, get out to the grow space and get some work done out there, play around with some plants, do some repots, some rearranging, and just, have fun with plants. That's all I feel like doing right now. I just want to play with my plants. There it is. Found it. It was in the mailbox. 
I didn't realize it was gonna be so little. Set this up, some prime cinematography, see if I can get my camera to balance here on this splatter guard. Hopefully that'll stay in place. And this is full of packing peanuts. Fun. I love packing peanuts. Not really, let me find a bag. I have a big bag in the garage where I store these. Anytime I get a box with packing peanuts in it, I hold on to them because sometimes they make a good additive for drainage and pots and potting mixes environment wise. I feel like it's better to try and find a use for them than even attempt to recycle them because the recycling doesn't usually even take them. I don't get things in the mail that often that have packing peanuts anymore. It's not the kind that can't be dissolved. So there's that. And then here is the plant. Oh no. Uh oh. Oh no. That doesn't look very good, does it? Kind of mushy. The center does still feel kind of firm, so hope for the best here. So this got lost in shipping. This isn't the fault of the vendor or anything like that. I don't even, this is, it's actually, it's from Walmart, but you know, they like kind of drop ship sort of, they sort of outsource their plants. So it's from a different grower. I think the name was JM Bamboo. It's an, <laughs> it's an Aphalandra that's supposed to have like extra variegated foliage on it. Here's the picture. Isn't that beautiful? I'm not disappointed. This is what I expected to happen. Like I said, not the fault of the vendor. So not gonna get mad about it. <laughs> Might still be some life down inside all that mush. Maybe, maybe the stem still firm. I don't know, get it cleaned up and put on the plant shelves and just see what happens. Oh, I'm so sad, poor plant. Uh, where are you going? As soon as I hit record, you gotta run away. Uh, it's like two days later. Here's what's been happening. Oh, hey Toby, what you doing down there? You hiding out? You like being in your little shelter down there? He loves laying down there behind those bar stools. I don't know why I said here's what's been happening. That, not much, not much has been happening at all. Looks a little different out here, doesn't it? The snow melted, yay, except not really. <laughs> it's nice that it melted over here. Still some ice over here though. Actually a significant amount goes all the way around to the driveway. And the problem is this is, well, I need this pathway here in order to get the plants out of the garage, so. I don't think that's happening. At least not for a few more days. I am so sorry. Did I come outside without you? Come on. Come on. Standing at the door whining and screaming at me. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. You got your toy. So, uh, yeah, the plan was to bring the plants out and make room in the garage to do a bunch of rearranging. And it said, well, I can't. <laughs> I want to, but still waiting on that to melt. There's some plants we can repot and go out and have a look at what's going on in the grow space. I would like to get some things moved around though, but it's all right. A few more days, not that big of a deal. Just do it next weekend. What you doing, Turbo? All right, time to go inside. Come on, baby. Good boy. You good boy. Oh, everybody's here. Got everybody. Got the Toby down there. Both the cats right here. Oh, I know why. I know why. It's dinner time. Will you do your stretches, Turbo? Turbo, do your stretches. Good stretches, Turbo. Good boy. That's good. Yeah, good boy, Turbo. Toby, you get one just for being a sweet Toby. There you go. All right. I guess we'll just maybe get some repotting done. Can at least have a look at some plants, see what's going on out there. And I just realized some of y'all may have no idea what I'm talking about here. So uh, the last like couple of weeks, I've been talking about how I would like to do some rearranging with the plants out here. Mainly that there are a whole bunch of plants back here, right along the back side of this pond that I would like to bring forward. At least a few of them I'd like to bring forward. And mostly I'm just gonna scoot a few things around. It's really not that big of a deal. But the problem is with the extreme cold temperatures we were having most of January, I had to bring in the more tender temperate plants that are generally out most of the winter time. So those would be the plants like the windmill palm, who is just flourishing. Look at that. So fun, so neat. And that's neither here nor there though. So some big windmill palms, Mediterranean fan palms, basically all the stuff that's right here that's in the way of me being able to get to the things that are right there. I've still been able to get back and water them, but I need more space to get it and like actually grab them and get like up close to them to move them around. And until I get these plants right here, these, these, and there's a big mule palm, two mule palms, and only it. once those are out, then I will regain that space. I just wasn't planning on these being in here this long, but January was exceptionally cold. Looking at the 10 day forecast, if that snow melts in a day or two, which will be after this video comes out, so it's kind of useless to the vlog, but once that snow does melt, they'll be good out there for probably at least two weeks. We'll be in the clear temperatures above, I think 20 is the lowest temperature I see in all these 
I normally will leave out into about 15 degrees. So they'll be good maybe for the rest of the month. I don't know. I kind of doubt it, but maybe. My main thing right now is that just I would like for them to be able to get back outside because, I mean, why keep them in here when they could be out there? I can't have the areca palm out there. It would die. I wouldn't be very happy outside with these temperatures. Same thing with the Dracenas, you know, but all the temperate ones, they should get out of here. Get in my way. There are still plenty of, oh, I just did all that talking, all that talking with that loud fan on. I'm so sorry. That was probably really loud and obnoxious. I have some plants that need to be repotted, intended to, which is something I would like to get done. So I'm gonna rummage around, see if I can't find two, probably eight inch pots, I think would do the trick and get these pruned up and get them looking a little bit better. Looking kind of scraggly as it is right now, huh? All right, gathered some pots, more than I need just for the begonias. I ended up going around and just picking up all the plants that I thought needed a repot or for like way past it. Like I have all these little tiny baby oleanders here that they took a hard freeze before they came in. So not exactly looking all that hot. Get a better look at them see if you can guess their fate when I get them repotted. And then the stromanthi back here, there are two. You can kind of see, yeah, one there, one there. And those both need to be repotted. That's something that I was waiting to do until the spring because I didn't think that it would be appropriate to do it this time of year. Normally not something you would want to do in February, but it's nice and toasty in here and they want to grow. So it just makes sense, I think, to bump them up into some bigger containers so that they're a little bit easier to manage. I've been having to water those stromanthes quite a lot over the last couple of weeks, like a lot. Watering out here, so much more fun when I don't have to worry about it getting really cold and the plants rotting and dying. In fact, I just watered three days ago and this morning when I came out here, this metanella was really, really thirsty. I had to spend some time getting that one rehydrated. It's amazing the difference between now and when I brought the plants inside or up until I got that heater installed. Prior to having that heater, I was not watering the plants very often, like at all. I think between November 1st when I brought them in and when I had the heater installed, I had watered this entire grow space maybe five times. I think it was four. I'm adding one on just in case. And when it's not very warm, you don't need to do an awful lot for the plants. You just kind of want to leave them alone. Don't want to wet when it's only in the 40s and low 50s, but now we're in the 70s and low 80s, which I have actually been trying to dial down because I don't know if I can keep up with that watering. I'm trying, but it is a lot to keep up with. And I would rather find like a good, like happy medium with everything, right? Something that's maintainable. Things don't need to be 82 degrees out here. I have a cloth that I've soaked in rubbing alcohol and when I go between plants, I just like to put the snippers in there. Keep that over there. This is plastic. So that rubbing alcohol is not going to hurt anything. All right, so first thing, the begonias. How are they even still alive? Actually, I, I know how, here's what happened. So both of these during the summertime, spring, summer, and most of fall when they were outside, were sitting just on top of the soil and some containers had mixed arrangements in them where the drip was hitting them. So these had both rooted out fully from the bottoms of their containers into those decorative planters. So that's what was keeping them going. They don't have that going for them anymore. They're just in these tiny little pots and it's, there's a lot more going on up here than can be easily maintained from down here. So the options are to cut them back and just leave them, which would be easier, or go ahead and repot them. Though I think a prune plus repot would be the way to go just to get them looking nice again. So it's going to look drastic, but it's just what we got to do for the plants. Come in here and take off like eh, about 50% of that growth. It'll be good for the plants. Going to help encourage it to flush back out from down below, put out some new leaves, and most importantly, help send out some new roots, get itself reestablished into the new containers. It's easy enough to do. I mean, what would that take? 10 seconds. These begonias, begonias, <laughs> they are really easy to root and propagate, which I could do. I know that I'm going to have people ask me why I'm not doing that. And the simple answer is just that I don't, I don't want any more. I'm good with the two that I have right here. They've been nice, sturdy plants. Don't need any more of them. Oh, this one, all that growth going in one direction. I didn't mention what these were. I believe these are the whimsy begonias, begonia whimsy. I'm not positive. There's another one that looks very similar to this one. It's just a nice big green leaf on it. I think it's an angel wing type with pink polka dots. Very pretty, especially during the summertime. <laughs> or just, you know, when they don't look like this. 
absolutely gorgeous plants. Overall, these have been really easy and simple to grow. I should cut out the skinny, scrawny parts. I don't really want to do that, but may as well just to keep the form growing properly. Too many things are going off in weird, wonky directions with the plants, and you have to start worrying about just, well, just the weight being distributed in an odd manner, right? So you have one branch that's like doing this like that when the rest want to come up through the middle. It's not the most ideal for a nice bushy healthy looking plant. What? See that up there? Why did I leave that there? That shouldn't be there like that. Neither should that one with that curve on it. Anybody else? You ever get the clippers in your hands and things almost get out of control? I know that that looks really drastic and extreme, but it's not. It's going to be totally fine. Now I need to do something with all this. What did I did? Why didn't I bring a trash bag with me? Finally give these plants the upgrade they deserve. They've been such troopers. I think I might have a smidge too much soil in there. Just a little bit too much. Yeah, that's better. I tend to like a heavier lip. I talk about that whenever I replant, replant, whenever I repot things, just it makes it easier to get in and, whoa. <laughs> All right, well that startled me. Did y'all see it? Got a gardening friend hanging out in the container there. Yep, it's alive. All right, the worm can stay. It's not not going to hurt anything. Begonias have very delicate roots. I'm just going to very lightly, <laughs> lightly tickle the edge of that and get it down in there. Let the worm enjoy its new home. That should be one happy worm. It just got upgraded to a castle. Talk about having lots of room for activities. It's going to be loving life in that pot. This is just standard potting mix. It's a Spoma potting mix. It already has the like starter stuff in it. That's why I'm not messing with any of that in here. I don't know if I even would mess with that indoors. The organic fertilizers, like Garden Tone, Plant Tone, the ones from Job's, all of them, it's not just a spoma. Uh, they tend to, at least when I've used them indoors, become just like major attractors for fungus gnats. It's understandable, it's a lot of organic material that's decomposing there. I'm sure that the gnats absolutely love that. They love all that stinky stuff. But that's also what those lovely fungus gnat traps come in handy for it. Which, by the way, when I did the Heliconia potting video, I put those in all the pots and I never mentioned what they were. So I had a few people ask me, my bad. I should have said what was going on there instead of just throwing yellow stickers into the containers. Not gonna lie, a little nervous to open this one up because that worm startled me. I'm not afraid of worms, it's just, it scared me. And the earwigs out here, sometimes they get gigantic. Well, I'm not afraid of worms. I'm not a big fan of being a ah, centipede. Don't like those. The one bug that I don't mess with. No, no. <sighs> I know they're good. They're beneficial. Man, if you've ever been hit by one of those things, it hurts. No, oh. I can find a stick or something to tease the roots with that one. I'm not gonna kill the centipede. It's a good bug to have around. They eat the other bugs, but I just, I don't want my hands in there with it. You know what? Those. Those roots look fine. They don't need much messing with. They're good. There we go. Okay, survived. Not that big of a deal. Is it in here? I'm going to fill this back in as quickly as possible. Can you tell I've been raising and training a puppy the last few months and my initial reaction to seeing something I don't like is just saying no. <laughs> bad, bad plant. No. All right, that's going to do. That's good enough. There goes the centipede. It got out. It broke out. Shit. All right, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, that was fun. I don't know if it was on camera. I have no idea. Centipede got out and then that ate up like 35 minutes of me trying to find it so I could catch it and toss it into the plants and I didn't, which is fine. Uh, th th so it's a little bit about me. I, I don't like centipedes. I respect them. I think they're cool. I don't kill them because they're very beneficial. You know that centipede's probably been eating earwigs and doing all kinds of great things. It's just when I'm indoors, they make me very uncomfortable, particularly if I'm filming a video because I'm surrounded by things, by lights and cords, and it's just, I, I can't get away. And that's that's the thing is it's just, it's maybe the lack of control, maybe that's what it is. I don't know, but it's, nope, not for me. Don't think so, not happy right now. I know there are going to be people who are like, Jeff, you're being ridiculous. The stings don't even hurt. One, yes they do, shut up. It's not like the worst thing ever, but it's startling and I just don't like to be startled. That's my main thing. Like I said, I don't kill them. I respect them. They're good to have around. Just not, not in an enclosed space. No, I'm sorry. Happy to have finally gotten that done for them. I'm going to try and squeeze this in back here with one hand. I don't know if I can though. There we go, right back there. Go ahead and give these begonias a nice drink. Burp the soil, as they say, get all those bubbles out. They should be much, much, much happier now. So I've spent some time thinking about it, like a solid 
minute and a half. And I really think the best thing to do would be to just, I'll repot the rest of them outdoors where I have more room to escape. And really just, it's so messy. It's a lot easier to do outside. So in a few days that snow will melt and can just pop those into some new planters, shake the soil off outside. That's what I would prefer to do. Much less to have to deal with in here dirt wise and in centipede wise. At the same time, I really, like I said, I don't mind the centipedes being in here. I just don't want them that close to me in my area. You know, I'm sitting right here. I don't want them that close to my body, to my lap and my legs. That was fun. Quite the adventure. These oleanders here, like they're moist. And I think that this is just cold damage on them. There's still some flexibility in here, but you can't always really tell just because it's green doesn't mean it's alive. This one back here looks a lot better. I really, with oleanders, I usually leave Leela. <laughs> with oleanders. I usually will leave them outside into the teens, uh, at which I just, that was a dumb thing to do with these. They were too small for that. But I think they're going to be okay. They've been sitting back over there in that corner where it's just a smidge bit more dark. So maybe having them over here also where it's warmer, it's much warmer from like the back of that pool and forward, that might help. So give those a couple days and see what's going on with them. But maybe being up by some brighter lights and in one of the warmer spots. I'll see if that makes a difference in these stems. Uh, we will see. The other oleanders are looking pretty good, but it's a much larger, more established plant that is used to taking some cold. They should be all right though. They have some flex in their stems. They should pull through. No updates to give on the Gloriosum yet, other than I popped it back inside of the reservoir container once I knew that all the moisture had drained out of the soil. It's a little bit torn as to what to do there, but I know what I shouldn't do is keep moving it around too much. So there it will stay. And if the soil takes more than a couple days to dry, then I'll go ahead and lift that inner container out. I had already done that and then it dried a lot faster than I wanted it to. So I put it back in. There's a lot of airflow over here. I have three fans going plus the heater. So that's four fans just to keep the air moving down from the ceiling. I have one fan on the ground to blow the cold air up and just keep things turning even though it is very humid in here still dried fairly i mean it's not that fast it's like two and a half three days have a few little plant updates before moving on and and in the video and here there's an anthurium crystallinum and it's well you can't see it but doing well it basically died back to just a nub at the same time that gloriosum did which this one I'm pretty sure is, was because of the colds. And I put under this bell here and it's just flushing back out, doing really well with that. Heliconias, not much action from them. Wasn't expecting much action. It's only been a week since I potted them up, but there is still the one in the back that had the little nub. That's got a whole entire leaf getting ready to pop out on it. So it's love and life. That doesn't happen all that often with those. So that's great. Usually, like I mentioned, you lose the stock this part right here. Normally that'll hang on for a while and then it'll die back and the new growth will come up from down below. So that's what waiting on here, waiting to see if the grow room is warm as it is. Is it still gonna be warm enough to get heliconias rooted? I don't know. I think it should be, but can't say for sure. Have to wait and see. Got some action from the tomatoes down here. When I plotted these up, remember the seed packet kind of just dumped out so there are a few too many in each one of these. They're looking good. They're just starting to put on their first set of true leaves. So that's exciting. I'm gonna have to thin those out very heavily. And then all of the seeds. Actually, I think it's time for me to take this dome off of here. I'll wait until morning because I want to get this set up onto the self-watering net. Is that a snail? No, it's just soil. Lots and lots and lots of growth on the artichokes and the oregano. So the oregano, the same thing happened. The seeds spilled. Now there's way too many in each cell, which isn't that big of a deal. Once those get a little bit bigger, they should be fairly easy to split up and divide. And like I said, this is going to have to, I'm going to have to lose that humidity dome here. They really don't need it anymore. They're not exposed to much air movement in there. I just wanted to hold this on until the oregano got just a smidge bigger. My experience with oregano has always been that if it dries out just a smidge too long, then it just, boom dies very, very quickly. And that's kind of just the way things go with seedlings in general, right? But see oregano is so much smaller than the artichokes, which I wasn't expecting things to be that way. Just wanted to give that some more time. Although really with the humidity out here, these drying out shouldn't be an issue. I just want to get them onto that self-watering mat before I remove that. The um, artichokes, this is a surprise. If you remember when I planted these up, I was talking about how the oregano was more than likely going to get started way before the artichokes. And the artichokes got going within what, like five days? Really, really, really fast. Much faster than last year, really any other year that I've grown them. So I will have to dig around and find my 
little stand that goes in there and the self-watering mat to go underneath that and get that lifted up. The seedlings can be more exposed to some air movement. They need that, you know, that air moving around them help produce nice strong roots. And geranium up here, doing great. Got lots of new little leaves starting to pop out on it. Beautiful pink flowers. I'm so happy I brought that one inside. And then an update on the flowers here on the windmill palm. If we can get in here and have a better look. It's a boy, see that? That's pollen. So I had been thinking it was a female because up until today, everything on here was very flat and the color had kind of washed out on them. Now the pollen is actually coming out on them. They are a brighter yellow. So I just had assumed that because they shot these inflorescence out so quickly that the it wouldn't necessarily take them an additional week to just go from looking like this to actually having the flowers on them. They're clearly male at this point. There's a good amount of pollen on there. Doesn't matter. I don't have a female to pollinate this with, but it looks cool. Looks very pretty. And I can always bag some of that pollen up, put it in the freezer and wait for one of my others to flower, but it took this long for this one to flower. So I don't really know if it's worth it. I'll think about it. It wouldn't hurt to go ahead and just shake some into a wax packet and freeze it, see what happens. And then lastly, great big, beautiful new leaf on the Monstera over here. They look nice. That thing shot out really fast, way faster than they usually do during the winter time. During the winter, normally when a leaf starts to come out, generally it takes like two and a half weeks or so for them to open and unfurl out here, but this is about a week faster than that, so that's great. And it's going to be hard to get this to focus because I can't really reach in here all that well, but it's a, yeah. I already got another nub in there ready to start pushing out once this one's done unfurling all the way. That's exciting. Looks like it has some decent variegation on it too. My Monstera I've talked about before, it doesn't have the best variegation, but I don't care. I still love it. I've had this plant for a crazy long time. So every single leaf that opens up is just fun. Variegated or not, I don't even care. I like the Deliciosas regardless of that variegation, but it does look like this one's gonna have some bigger patches in it. So that's fun because that leaf is still kind of in that softer stage. These Monstera leaves, they open up and they tend to look rather small and then they slowly get bigger and bigger and bigger over the course of you know, a week or two, something like that. This is the last one that it had opened up and that was back in, I don't know, maybe October, I wanna say something like that. And then it stalled out and just, just been hanging out. And then within about maybe three days of that heater being installed, it started to push out that new leaf. That's a plant that was happy to have some more heat. It was doing fine otherwise, but it was just kind of hanging out. And typically during the winter time out here, when I had things like wrapped in the plastic and there was more heat, I would usually get like three or four leaves out of the Monstera with it having not put out a leaf in like two months. I'm glad to see that it's happy and moving and growing again. Always fun watching the plants grow, especially when they're ones that we've had for a really long time. I got that plant when it was, I don't know, maybe 18 inches tall, something like that. Got it off eBay for like $44.99 years ago before the rare plant craze and everything went on. That was a pretty typical price for a tie at the time, especially one that size. It's done an awful lot of growing since then. I'm gonna wrap it up because with the ice and everything outside there just isn't much i can do right now i got the begonias repotted which was great that was fun it was an adventure and uh you know all this other stuff we'll get that done next week really can't imagine i would think three more days and that rest of that snow and ice should be melted enough that i can get those big plants i could carry the little plants around but it's just these big ones they need to go onto a dolly there's a big mule palm back there there's another mule palm over there and those windmill palms i guess i could just push them out to the driveway but i'd rather not i like them out in the backyard outside the door where I can see them. It just brings things back to life. It looks so nice having them outside on the patio when everything else is just brown and cold and dormant. Comment down below, say hi, love talking to y'all. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.